Agora TV. The world is thinking. Here we are faced with what you might call um, uh, unreasonable risks. I mean, this is a great country for, for horse racing and betting on horses, right? Uh, and uh, I think it would be very interesting to take the people who have the tote bag or whatever it's called, put them in charge for a while, because they actually know what a risk is. And they know when you bet and when you, what you bet on and what you don't bet on most of the time. And if, and I think this is acceptable to most people, if it's true that there's a 50-50 chance that there is global warming, you know, just be, let's be conservative about this, and if there's a 50-50 chance that that global warming is caused by human beings and it's not cyclical or it's not entirely cyclical, then that is an unacceptable risk. If you wait around to prove it, in you know, classic utilitarian, European, rational, linear, Kantian, uh, Platonist terms to get the truth so that it's not about superstition, well, that'll be fine. I mean, you'll have the truth. Of course, at that very moment, your grandchildren are going to be fried if you're wrong, right? Because it'll be too late. So it's an unacceptable risk. And yet you have the most educated civilizations in the history of the world. More people have more education than ever before in the history of the world, and yet they can't bring themselves to act on the basis of what is obviously an unacceptable risk, even though it may seriously mean that their grandchildren will fry. That's a very interesting point. I mean, you know, if you say, if, I, if you say, okay, so you mean you're willing to take this risk, even if it means your grandchildren fry? That's the question to ask, right? There is no other question really to ask because it's direct and it's human and it focuses us. I've flown over the years, over the last 30 or so years, regularly over glaciers in northern Canada. I've seen pretty well all of them. And glaciers are, it's pretty straightforward, you know. The, the, there are these mountain peaks and then there's a bowl at the top in between the mountains and they're filled with glaciers. And then there are the valleys coming down around them and the valleys are filled with the glaciers. It's sort of, it's like a big poisonous spider, except it's not poisonous. Uh, the arms come, big white arms coming down the valleys and at the bottom, it looks like the pad of a spider's claw or paw, and uh, they break up at the end and fall over into the ocean and become icebergs. It sort of almost looks like a chessboard when they're about to fall over. And uh, we took photographs of all of these glaciers in the 1940s and 50s, so we know exactly what they look like. And you fly over them today, and in every single case, the legs have melted 500 yards, a kilometer up the valley. Of course, I mean, just because they're getting smaller doesn't mean they're melting, <laughs> right? I mean, that's, that's, that's where we are. I mean, that's where we are in a kind of self-destructive intellectualism, which prevents us from looking at what any fool uh, could look at and say, gosh, uh, there may be a problem here. Maybe we should actually do something as opposed to negotiate about doing something. And it is indeed European philosophy and Western methodology and 19th century English economics, which dominate today, globalism is 19th century English economics, you know, uh, buccaneer capitalism and free trade, that's mid 19th century English economics, it's nothing new about it. It's all of those things which actually prevent action. It's the, so, the, the silo approach of our universities, which means that it's almost impossible to have any kind of integrated thought which would allow one to say, gosh, forget the numbers, just have a look. Maybe we should do something really fast, just in case. And so we're prevented from doing that, not by some evil force. Not, you know, of course there are people lobbying and all the rest of it, but that's not what stops us. Lobbyists, lobbyists never stopped us if we didn't want them to stop us. It's our own conception of ourselves as 19th century Europeans, as people caught up in a logic of false rationality, which prevents us from actually simply doing something about all of this. It's a manager's dream or nightmare, which is to say everything is about control as opposed to action.